is that I believe uh, typifies or exemplifies an entrepreneur is energy and passion. Uh, and I think uh, Dr. Khan exemplifies that. You can hear when he presents, he talks about his ideas, uh, the energy and passion that comes out in his voice and what he says and how he says. You can tell that he truly believes that. And I, I think for us in the room, for you in the room, uh, as aspiring entrepreneurs or those that are you know, getting started on that journey, I think that's something you need to watch and, and note as well because certainly that can certainly help you take your business a very long way. So today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about starting your business. Um, I won't do much of the introduction piece because you already know a little bit about me, but I would like to share with you a little bit about what you're going to learn today. So hopefully this works for me. So, uh, Again, I just want to cover a little bit about what you will learn in this presentation. First of all, what we should be thinking about is, is business the right direction for you? Many of us here are thinking about starting a business, or some of us already have started a business, but one of the things we need to think about is, is business in fact the right direction for you? Do you have what it takes to be an entrepreneur? How exactly do you get your business off the ground? Understanding your customers and your market, very key thing, understanding your competition. And lastly, I'd like to share with you a little bit of insight on how you can actually win $300,000 to get your business started. Well, that was very No, not you. Okay, so we are here today, you are here today because you are thinking about starting your business. I had an opportunity to speak to some of you before the session started. Some of us, uh, I think I met young, one young lady that said she actually had three businesses on the go, um, hit a bit of a roadblock as well, so her business is sort of stalled. So you're all here for different reasons. Um, you're thinking of starting, you've started already, um, or you're well on your way to being successful. So you're here to look for some ideas and some tips on how you can actually continue to grow that as well. So here are some of the questions that you need to ask yourself if you're going to decide if the entrepreneurial route is the right one for you. First of all, are you willing to take risks? Starting up a brand new business, perhaps maybe leaving the comfort zone of a salary job and going into the unknown is a risky venture. And are you willing to take those risks? The other thing you can ask yourself is, are you willing to work long hours? Uh, entrepreneurs do not have the 95 job. Right? They start very early, they finish very late, or they may work through the night, it depends. I mean, it's a different, uh, different uh, schedule that you might maintain. Have you done your market research? Are you willing to market your product or your service? You know, it's one thing to know that you, know, you have a product or service that you believe in, but as, as Dr. Khan mentioned, you need to be able to get behind that and market and sell that each and every day. Here's the key thing. Have you determined your startup costs? Uh, you know, there's different ways in which you can start a business today. I think I heard that some, you know, we all know that some of the big businesses today start very, very small, whether it's in your bedroom or in your garage or somewhere else. But there are usually some costs involved and have you determined what exactly those costs are? Are you willing to learn? And again, this was talked about before by the previous presenter because Learning about your business or learning about your industry and your market is an ongoing process. Whether you're starting your business on day one or you're at day 10,001, there is always something that you can continue to learn. And you have to ask yourself, am I that type of person? Am I the type of person that is willing to continue to learn so I can continue to grow and invest in my business? Do you have what it takes to leave? Now, you may say to yourself, okay, well, if I'm a small business, I'm a business owner of one, I'm a company of one person. Well, yes, I mean, you have to be able to lead your business, lead yourself through the industry as well, but also as your business continues to grow and you hire on staff perhaps, you have to be able to lead them and, and share your vision, share your passion with them as well so that you can, they can join you in continuing to grow your business. Ask yourself, do I have what it takes, do I have what it takes to be an entrepreneur? How many people in the room consider themselves to be an entrepreneur? Just by show of hands. Okay, so we've got about 20% of the room that thinks they're an entrepreneur. Okay, so let's see, ask yourself, uh, if we can answer yes to 
to most or all of the following questions, then perhaps you are well on your way to being an entrepreneur. So the first question would be, do you like taking charge of your future? Do you like to chart your own destiny? Or would you like somebody else to do that for you? Do you like setting your own schedule? What about making decisions? Do you like making decisions? This may seem like a simple question to answer yes to, but think about it. Are you comfortable in making the decisions that would impact perhaps not only you, but your business and those that work for you? Are you ambitious? Do you have that drive to grow and continue to develop your business, your product, or service? Because sometimes, you know, you may start something, you may have a, a great flash in the pan type of idea that you can get started, but then if the energy and the passion doesn't sustain, or you don't have that ambition to continue to grow, then that business may die along with those ideas. Are you motivated? When you run your own business, sometimes you gotta talk to yourself, right? Anybody here ever had conversations with themselves as a business owner? Yeah, I see a lot of people. Right? Yes, well, you know, when you answer your own question, then, that, then you need another business staff, you need to go see psychologists after that. No, but seriously, um, keeping yourself motivated is something that you need to think about. Am I able to do that? Because there will be times, there are times, undoubtedly, where things will get slow, things, you know, you'll question yourself, am I doing the right thing? How do I keep myself motivated to keep this business going? Do you have what it takes to persevere through lean times? For those of you who own businesses already, you know that you don't start making money from day one, okay? In fact, it may take quite some time for you to start generating a profit, and are you willing and able to live and work through those lean times? That's a tough question. And not many of us are able to persevere through those downtimes, and that's oftentimes what encourages us to give up before we actually get to that growth cycle in our business. We talked about this before. Are you willing to take risks? Any good business, any good business has to take risks. If you want to get that reward of growth in your business, you have to take perhaps calculated risks so that you can allow that business to grow. And also, are you prepared to work long hours? You've heard me talk about that before, and that's out there for a reason, because uh, clearly as an entrepreneur, you have to be able to continue to work and dedicate yourself and your time to making your business successful. So this continues, it's not, it's not a short list. Here's an interesting one. Are you willing to forego regular salary for a vacation? So for some of us who are regular salary workers, you get a paycheck every week, every two weeks, every month, as the case may be, and you're able to plan a budget and so on. As a business owner, that becomes very, very tough because you can't necessarily plan initially for what that business income is going to be. So being able to forego some of that comfort zone, that luxury, uh, is something that as an entrepreneur willing to start, start your own business, are you comfortable with that? Are you willing to continually market your product and service? Again, you have to get behind it, you have to continue to believe in it so that it will continue to grow. I think Dr. Khan mentioned this a little bit as well. He talked about, do you have good people skills? Are you able to relate? Schmoozing people. Well, you know, absolutely. You have to be able to relate to people because if you're a business owner, you have, you are the accountant, you're the salesperson, you're the HR officer, you're everything, right? But ultimately, no business can survive without sales. So to get sales, you need to be able to relate to people. You need to be able to get out build relationships so that you can get those sales that you and your business need to thrive and survive. So do you have good people skills? The other thing you want to look at is, do you have what it takes to lead? We talked about that a little bit. Can you bring out the best in others? This perhaps maybe applies for when you're growing your company, you have employees that work for you, you know, being able to keep them motivated and get them to you know, do their best for you and your business. Because again, that passion, that energy has to be shared. Are you organized? I mentioned before that as a small business owner, you typically run everything, right? You're doing multiple things at the same time. And I know that you know, Dr. Khan talked about multitasking and not, and not multitasking. Uh, not that I disagree with the point. However, it's oftentimes what we find ourselves doing. As business owners, you're, you're juggling many things and 
sometimes it's the sales ball that falls because you gotta go pick something else, right? Uh, learning how to multitask and how to be able to manage multiple things at the same time is a skill that, uh, that you perhaps need to think about. And being organized is one way in which you can do things. Are you disciplined? I mean, we talked about that before as well, and being able to stay true to what you believe in and continue to you know, believe in growing your business is, is very, very key. So we can see here you know, a couple of uh, questions that we can ask ourselves you know, just to determine really do we have what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur. So now let's assume that we are, none of you have left the room because you've seen the questions. So I'm assuming that uh, most of you have answered yes to the questions or you feel positive at least about what you've seen. So let's talk about now some tips. I'll share some tips with you on how you can actually get your business off the ground. Here's some tips that you can follow. Now, this is a key thing. Some of you may have heard the uh, phrase before, plan your work and then work your plan. Plan your work and then work your plan. So any good business, any good idea, anything at all has to start with a sound business plan that you, as the business owner and the entrepreneur, need to develop and design. So how exactly do you do that? Well, successful entrepreneurs, we know, do a lot of background research before they sell their products and services. And a business plan pulls everything together so that you as a business owner can understand, you can, you can sell, you can present that to a banker, for example, and say, well, here's my idea for growing my business. Uh, something that, can, it's a, think of it as a template for what this business is, is going to do as it continues to grow. Think about you know, what should be in your plan, the type of business you're creating, the goals of your business, short-term and long-term goals, how you intend to accomplish those goals. You need to demonstrate in your business plan an understanding of your marketplace, your competition, and who are your customers. Very, very key. And then of course, how do you intend to finance your business? One thing I will take a plug for here is the Scotia Plan Writer for Business. It's an interactive tool that's available on our website. So if you visit diana.scotiabank.com, uh, you can get some easy links through our small business page uh, to the Business Plan Writer. And I'll come back to that uh, at the end of the presentation in relation to how you can win up to $300,000 for your business. But we also have a number of online tools that you can use at our website uh, to be able to help you to understand how you can build and grow your business. And I also want to take the opportunity at this juncture perhaps to introduce uh, the young lady sitting in the front of the room. Her name is Karen Chase. Uh, Karen, if you may stand. Uh, Karen is the business banking manager at uh, the Scotiabank Carmichael Street branch. Uh, our information is just outside as well. If you're thinking of building or growing your business, uh, we certainly are in a position to help you. Um, people like Karen have the expertise and the knowledge to help you to get that business started. And of course, a lot of the tools available on our website, as I mentioned. Okay, so we're talking about tips on helping you get your business off the ground. Investing in your own education. Now, we talked about before that, you know, this is a, an ongoing learning process, right? Um, you know, when you, when you own your business, you always have to be willing to learn new things, right? To continue to evolve because, and, and, and the reason why is because you may have an idea today, right? For a business that will work in today's market. They say the only constant thing is like in, in life is change. So you have to remember that your marketplace is going to change. Your customers' needs are going to change. You are going to change, right? And if that is the case, then your business can't always stay the same. And in order for your business to evolve and to change, you have to continue to learn and to adapt to these changes. So being a lifelong learner is a key attribute to any entrepreneur, any successful entrepreneur. Get your finances in order. Save as much money as you can before you start your business. You're gonna hear later on today from my colleague at Republic Bank, and because they're gonna talk about you know, financing your business and some of the challenges that you as entrepreneurs or small business owners have in accessing financing to your business. We know that that's a challenge because it's, it's, it's 
you know, perceive as a higher risk, but it's important that you, as a business owner, understand your source of financing. You have to be able to start your own idea with some of your own capital, with some of your own resources. Keep your overhead low. This is a key thing because sometimes you know we get perhaps overly enthusiastic, right? You start a new business and maybe I'm thinking, okay, well, if I need to make deliveries, maybe I need to branch shine the car. So I go and I buy a car for the business, and of course you've got this expense and all this depreciating asset, and uh, you know, by now all of a sudden, you know, my income isn't coming in, right? Start by keeping your overhead low. At the end of the day, as I mentioned before, you know, some of the most successful businesses start very, very small, right? And, and in today's world, you can start your business through social media, through the internet. You have access to resources that don't necessarily mean that you have to go rent a place and open your doors to the public to start a business, right? Start your business in a smart way by keeping your overhead low because that way, as you start making money, and as you start making some profits in your business, those profits have one place that they should go. Can anybody tell me where they should go? Where should I go? there after you do something else that's more important. Where should the money go? You're starting off your business, where should it go? Back into the business. Well, maybe not yet expansion, but yes, eventually. I like where you're thinking. Here's a, a forward-thinking option. But definitely, remember we're talking about getting started, right? So, you know, that first few dollars that you make, you now have to either buy more inventory or maybe improve your website. Whatever it takes to start getting more business into your doors, you have to invest in that business. So keeping your overhead low allows you to do that effectively. I know you've heard me talk about this before, and it's, it's really, really key. Learning from the experts. Remember that when you start out in a business or an idea, you're not the only one, right? There's a world of information out there, people that you can talk to. Networking is a key thing. Perhaps becoming a member of the GCCI will allow you to network with those that know something about your business, know something about your industry, people who can share knowledge and ideas and, and, and allow you to help you to grow your business. So network, network, network. It's a really, really big thing uh, that will help you to be able to grow your business. And learning from others is always a very strong thing to do. Here's, I want to talk a little bit about something that is often overlooked, uh, but very, very important. Uh, and I'm going to talk about research. Um, you know, sometimes we have an idea that we think is, is a really good one, and it, it is. And you say, okay, well, I'm going to start doing this and start selling this product or this service. But you do so without necessarily knowing who your customers are and what does the marketplace actually look like. So until you get to the point where you can actually pay an independent body to go out and do the research for you, here are some of the tools that you have that can help you to make some of your own judgments and your own decisions. Look closely. Examine your marketplace because there's a lot of information that exists right around you that we need to look at. Spend some time observing how consumers buy and use the goods similar to what you want to produce. For example, if you're thinking of getting into the clothing, clothing business, you might want to understand, okay, what are some of the common trends? You know, what are some of the clothes that are being spent? Some of the behaviors that people exhibit in that industry and in that business so that you can learn from what's currently happening in the marketplace. Other things you can do. Research the size and the location of the market. Okay? Whether it's growing or it's a mature market. So for example, on the East Bank, we know that there's a lot of building going on, a lot of construction. Right? So if you're in the building business or you're in the home construction business, then that might be a good market to grow your business because there's a lot of demand for your product. So I think what we're saying here is, depending on what your product is, if you're a mixologist, then you know, then you know where you can sell your product. Um, you know, depending on what your product or service is, understand your market, do some research, understand what the demand is for your product and your service, 
so that you can focus your energy and your efforts in those areas so that you can access your customers quickly. Very key thing. Other things to think about and to look for. How right? about testing your product? Right? If you're bringing a new product to the market, something that might be new or innovative, uh, or maybe it might not be new, right? But maybe just different to something that else, something else is in the market, like something that will compete. Well, you can think about maybe putting your product for a prototype in a small store, getting some customer response, uh, perhaps developing some you know, relationships with uh, people in the business community that might be willing to profile your product or your service and help you to understand, okay, well, I have this idea that I think can work, but let me test it, right? Do people feel the same way that I do about are they equally excited about what I'm talking about? Uh, and so getting your product out there and getting some initial feedback is a key thing to, to consider. You could also create your own focus group. So for example, family, friends, you know, colleagues at work, if you're still, you know, if you're still in the nine to five job, maybe you want to say, okay, well, here's something I'm thinking about. What do you think about this? Get some feedback, get some insight from those folks so that they can tell you firsthand what they feel about their product. For example, again, going back to clothing, would they use it? Will they wear it? Um, you know, how might it be improved, for example? And, and, and key thing is, how much might they be willing to pay? So depending on the product or the service, you know, if you're thinking about the pricing strategy in your business as well, you want to maybe test that by just simply asking questions to those who you know around you that can give you some honest hope and feedback. Another key thing is to know your competition, right? There is hardly a business out there that doesn't have a direct competition, okay? You need to know your competitors so that as you enter into this market and you know about your business, you've got to be able to do this research and knowing what your competition is or who your competition is is really critical before you start. Of course, you can use the internet to search the names of potential customers, visit their websites, you know, see, get a look and a feel for what they do, how they do what they do, what they sell, and that will help you to determine how your product or service can position uh, along with their, uh, against your competition and how they actually market themselves as well is a key thing for you to learn. There's new sites, industry sites, news groups, and so on that we can all look. Here's an interesting thing. On social media today, you can get a lot of information about what people are saying about your competitors, right? The good, the bad, and the ugly, it's all up there, right? Um, so that might be so lots of information available to you at your fingertips that's really easy to find and very, very critical and important to do this research before you start your business. Here's another interesting tip. You can get on your competitors' mailing lists, right? Let them start sending you information. Be on, get on their mailing list, internet, and email. Uh, you know, get a sense as to what's happening in their company and their business so that you can stay abreast of what your competition is doing. Monitoring the news is another way to, to know about things. Here's another thing as well, it's called mystery shopping, right? Um, you know, have you gone into your competitor's business and pretended to be a customer, right? Really sort of get the customer experience yourself so you can see and understand what they do, how they do what they do. Because I can tell you that, you know, in some cases, depending on what your product or service is, your competitive advantage might just be your service. Your product might be the same, it might be similar, it might, be, it might be similarly priced, your features and your benefits might be similar, but what could very well differentiate you and allow you to be successful and your competitors less so is service. Anybody disagree with that? Or how many people agree that service is a key differentiator in your business today? Okay, great. Okay, so, Thank you. Now, there's a, hopefully my intention here today was to just share some tips and ideas with you as to things you need to think about. I understand that perhaps the audience in this room, we're all at different stages in where we are in business. Some of you might be starting out, some of you might be well on your way to growing a very successful business. Even if you're on the growth phase, some of, some of you could probably look back on some of these tips you know, and a bit nostalgia and say, yeah, I did that, I was there, I can relate. Um, so hopefully the information shared with you this morning was, uh, was, was helpful and useful for you, things that you can think about as you're getting out and starting your business. And as I mentioned, 
the, um, the social bank, we are here to help you to grow your business, whether it's through our tools on the website or business bankers like Ms. Chase, we are here to help you. Now, I did say to you at the very beginning, I want to share with you how you can win $300,000 to help you start your business. So I didn't forget, this is what you need to do. So again, I want to direct you back to our website. If you go to www.diana.scotiabank.com, click on the small business tab. Okay, it's on the landing page, it's a small business. When you go to the tools and advice, you will get to the Scotia One business plan writing. Here's what I'd like you to do. This is a free online tool that helps you, as a business owner, as a prospective business owner, learn how to write your business plan. It guides you through what you need to do to write your business plan. What we'd like you to do is if you go on online and you prepare your business plan, you can submit it to us on or before October 20th via email to Jennifer Cipriani, and she's sitting right in the front here, uh, Jennifer Cipriani at scotiabank.com. If you wish to send a hard copy in, you can mail it in to Jennifer. Ryan, this is right there, 63 Robert Street in Georgetown. What we'll do is we'll receive all of the uh, business plans that are written. We'll have an independent panel of judges review your business plans, and we'll select a winner, and that winner will be awarded $300,000 on or before. Thank you.